Hello and welcome to another Tyco video. In this presentation, I am delighted to share with you a very exciting enhancement that has been made to the synthetic tracking algorithm. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with what synthetic tracking is, I do have just a brief recap here to offer. So most of you are probably familiar with what I call the conventional technique as it pertains to the discovery of asteroids, whereby you take a series of three or four images typically spaced at least 10 to 20 minutes apart, and you then attempt to identify moving objects from one frame to the next. Now, the downside to this approach is that it does typically require a larger telescope, typically on the order of 20 inches or half a meter, in order to make any significant discoveries today. Now, the reason for this is because the signal-to-noise ratio, or in other words, the ability to detect an object with this approach is limited to that of a single exposure. And that is because this technique does not involve stacking the, uh, these images. Fortunately, however, we do have another technique called synthetic tracking, which enables one, even with just a modest sized telescope, to make discoveries. And that is because this approach does leverage the power of stacking. And of course, most of you are probably familiar with that as it pertains to astrophotography, but in this context, we wish to detect moving objects. So the images have to be stacked with a motion offset. And even more specifically, in our case, we want to discover new objects. So here, because we wish to discover them, we do not know in advance their motion. Uh, therefore, we have to explore literally hundreds and thousands of different trial stacks. So that is the power of synthetic tracking, is that it allows us to discover new objects uh, with the power of stacking, even if we do not know their motion in advance. And so again, uh, this is a very computationally intensive uh, process, but thankfully due to modern GPU hardware, it has now recently become a viable technique. And I do have just a few statistics to show with that. So in the year 2020, uh, there were five near-Earth objects uh, discovered with this technique using the Tyco software. And now in the year 2021, that number has grown to 68, including uh, two comets. So this is very exciting because these were all discoveries made by amateur astronomers with amateur equipment. Uh, more specifically, uh, we have two observatories here, W16 uh, out of Alabama, and another one, W94, San Pedro de Atacama in Chile. And so these two observatories, again, they're both amateur uh, observatories. Uh, W16 uses two 14 inch uh, telescopes and hyperstar mode, which allows it to capture very wide field uh, uh, views. And W94 uses two uh, 11 inch or 28 centimeter RASA telescopes. And so those are also very wide field uh, instruments. So again, this is very exciting because it was not too long ago that uh, they would say, uh, people would say that the days of amateurs uh, making discoveries were long ago. Well, fortunately, uh, with this technique, that is no longer the case. And so, uh, again, I mentioned now this enhancement to the synthetic tracking algorithm. So just a few key highlights here. It is now about twice as fast compared to the old version. It no longer requires a star mask, which is very exciting. I'll get to a few examples of that in just a moment. and. I have also retuned the confidence algorithm, so it has a lot fewer false positives. So just as an example here, I mentioned it is faster. So here's a graph showing uh, previous versus new, and you can see on average, it's about twice as fast. Uh, worst case scenario, at least 75% faster, uh, in some cases, three times faster. So very nice to get that kind of uh, performance improvement. And I mentioned also the star mask. Uh, so. If you have read any of the literature on synthetic tracking, uh, some call it digital tracking. Uh, here is a paper here, it's a very good paper, and they go into some detail on a star mask. So here they used uh, a masking of the stationary sources in order to reduce uh, false positives. Uh, and so uh, with the new algorithm, it has a much better way of dealing with that. And so it no longer requires a star mask. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and look at some of the examples to compare the improvement of the new versus the old version. So here is one example. This is 2021 AV7. Uh, this is a potentially hazardous asteroid that was detected earlier this year by station W94. 
and you can see it here in the image viewer. Now, this is the old version, and it was able to detect this object at high confidence, so that's exactly what we want. However, it also detected several uh, false objects at medium confidence, and so uh, this is just a large number of false uh, detections in this particular data set, and it also took uh, 901 seconds to process this set of data. Uh, now if we look at the new version with the new algorithm, it took far less time. It took 519 seconds as opposed to 901. And more importantly, uh, we also have zero false objects breaking through at the medium or high confidence levels. Okay, so here is another example. I ran the synthetic tracker with no limit on speed or position angle and this resulted in about 50,000 motion vectors. And as you can see, the old version took about 2,700 seconds to complete the search. Uh, even so, it came back with no detections identified. Uh, these are all tracks with no confidence. And that is primarily because the dwell time on this field was only about 20 minutes in duration. And all of the objects, the vast majority of them in this field, are slow movers, uh, main belt asteroids, and so forth that only moved about three to four pixels within this time frame. And as a result, the old version, is, it's just simply not able to uh, detect any objects of that nature. And so we have, as you can see here, zero detections. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how the new version performed. Okay, so here it is with the new version. And as you can see, I supplied the same parameters for the search resulting in about 50,000 motion vectors. And this time it took about 1,600 seconds, which is a lot faster than it took uh, in the old version of about 2,700 seconds. So much faster. And uh, noticeably, we actually do have detections this time around. There are about two dozen uh, asteroids detected in this field of view. So that's a significant improvement. And if I wanted to, I could also run the compute competence routine to evaluate uh, which of these are likely to be true detections versus false detections. Uh, but before I do that, I want to also point out that the compute confidence routine with this version, it also is going to optimize the motion uh, of each of these uh, detections. In other words, it will recompute what the actual speed and position angle is going to be uh, by using uh, the precise astrometry uh, measurements of that object. So uh, when you do a first pass, uh, with the synthetic tracker, it is going to compute uh, the calculated speed and position angle based upon the pixel uh, positions of that object. So it's very quick to do that. Uh, we, we can deliver results pretty quickly that way. But when the objects have traveled only a small number of pixels, uh, which is the case here when you only have 20 minutes of dwell time, and these are all slow movers, then it's very difficult to compute an accurate uh, speed and position angle when it has only moved a few pixels. So now, when we run the compute confidence routine, it is going to not only compute uh, the likelihood of them being true or false detections, but also improve upon the motion vectors. So now you see uh, these, uh, the speed and position angle now matches much more closely with that of the expected uh, speed and position angle. And uh, you can also see here, uh, this object right here is not associated with any known object. I can double click on it and it looks like it should be a true detection. So let's go ahead and now rerun the match with known objects. And since we have optimized the motion vector, uh, you can see that it now does match up with a known object. And that is because uh, in my settings uh, for the known object module, I had a threshold as to how far out the speed and position angle could be. So once we uh, optimize that motion vector and it came much more in line with the expected uh, speed and position angle, then it now matched up with that known object. Now, I also have uh, a listing here. So here are all the high confidence, the medium confidence, and so forth. So if I double click on this one here, uh, you can see it does not match up with any known object. So double click on it, you can see the animation. Uh, but if you look, uh, this is nothing more than a hot pixel artifact. So uh, the new version does a fantastic job. Uh, suppressing random noise, uh, but if you have camera artifacts such as hot pixels and so forth, uh, those can still break through. And that's just because the 
uh, whenever you align the images, they can tend to have somewhat of a consistent motion, and that's going to produce a candidate detection. So it's still, uh, again, two solutions for that. One is uh, you should dither your images if possible to do so, and you should also uh, apply a good calibration routine. You should calibrate the images uh, with a good dark frame and flat frame and uh, try to eliminate those hot pixels and other artifacts if at all possible. And that will deliver much better results. So anyway, that's just uh, an example there. But uh, as you can see, it's doing a very good job, uh, even with just 20 minutes of dwell time uh, on these slow movers. So uh, this is great, uh, much better than the old version. And so uh, here, for example, this is Comet uh, 2017 B3. And you can see the animation here. And so overall, a very good uh, improvement uh, with the uh, enhanced algorithm. And as I mentioned earlier, one of the key enhancements uh, to the synthetic tracking algorithm that has been made in this version uh, is that the star mask threshold is no longer uh, in use. It has been uh, removed and that allows us to detect uh, these brighter objects, uh, the objects that have uh, less motion to them. And so here is one example of that. This is Comet 4P. Uh, it has a lot of signal, it's very bright, and ordinarily it would have been suppressed by the star mask threshold. So uh, again, this is a known object, so you wouldn't really have to use the synthetic tracker on it in the first place, but uh, we want to see how it would perform uh, if we wanted to pretend as though it were an unknown uh, object. So uh, here it is. Uh, let's go ahead and start off again with this comparison, uh, the old version. So we would go to the synthetic tracker and we would typically click on auto threshold. So we're assuming as though we want to identify unknown objects in this field of view and we know nothing about this comment. So we would click auto threshold and click OK, default sensitivity. And just to make this really quick, uh, I can put in a limit on speed and position angle. And so uh, this is a very small number of motion vectors to search. So I click OK and then give it a moment. And let's go ahead and see if it came back with any detections, uh, if it identified that object or not. So here's uh, nothing came back with any uh, significant confidence. Uh, and the first track here uh, is just simply noise. So it didn't detect anything of interest. Uh, now let's run it one more time, uh, this time uh, easing back on the, on the star mask threshold. So we'll open it up a bit here. And I click OK. And let's see what uh, comes back this time. Compute confidence. And it looks as though it probably detected it. So let's give it a moment here to do that. And double click. And so sure enough, uh, having uh, manually uh, modified that star mass threshold, uh, it was able to detect it. Uh, but uh, here again, uh, we don't want to have to manually uh, modify the threshold or anything like that. We want everything to be as automatic as possible. So fortunately, uh, the new version does away with that star mass threshold, and that allows us to automate things even more. So let's go ahead and take a quick uh, look at the new version and how it detects it. Okay, so here is the new version. And if I go to Action Synthetic Tracker, uh, the first thing you will notice is that it no longer prompts for the star mask threshold. Uh, instead, it takes you directly to the sensitivity threshold, and it offers a few preset options here. If you want high sensitivity, balanced sensitivity, or a quick scan. Uh, so balanced, 99% of the time, that's what you are going to choose, and that's what I would recommend for a sky survey. Uh, if you really need even more sensitivity, uh, then uh, you can choose this option uh, and you can even go more than that uh, if you have to. Uh, but balanced is the uh, recommended 99% of the time that will give you the, the desired results. And so I'm going to click OK. This is the default setting and I'll use the exact same motion uh, parameters as in the old version. Click OK. So again here without the star mass threshold uh, it is able to now detect this object uh, as again high confidence and that's the only thing it detected at high confidence uh, so that's great there are no false uh, detections here in this uh, particular search and so again uh, this makes it a lot more uh, automated and no one has to manually tweak 
a threshold uh, to perform the scan. So another example here is that of periodic comet 2021 U3. And as you can see with the old version, uh, it detected it at medium confidence. And the reason I chose this example is because this object is noticeably more faint than in the previous example. It has a lot less uh, signal, yet we still want to be able to detect this object if at all possible. So again, the old version was able to do so. Uh, it came back at medium confidence. And the processing time, uh, it took about 538 seconds uh, to process this particular data set. Now with the new version, uh, the processing time uh, is 322 seconds, so noticeably faster. And it came back at high confidence for this particular object. So we're still able to detect it, and it took a lot less time. And again, with new version, uh, we have fewer false positives. So again, uh, we can still detect these faint objects and do so in a lot less time. Well, that's about it for this video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.